Travis Wynn Goodsell. As a born and raised Mormon, uh, there were many things that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints had kept from me. Knowledge, history, other facts and details about the religion's past. And so uh, it required me to do research. Not what the church was telling me to believe in, because there were too many questions, too many contradictions, too many confusions, too many gaps. And so it became necessary for me to eventually do a full research of my own doctrine, of my own theology, of my own religion, of my own administration, of my own scriptures, uh, traditions, etc. And so I've decided to do this video uh, about what I had uncovered, and it's only 10, because I don't want to make it too long for you. Uh, these are the top one, top, uh, top 10 of many more that are available out there, but uh, top 10 uh, facts that Mormons don't know about Mormonism. And so uh, how I'll do it is I'll um, stop, set up the movie maker uh, with the number countdown to one, and then talk, stop, etc. Until we finish. So let us begin with number 10. As Mormons, we all went around on our uh, 19 for me, but now it's 18 for boys and 19 for girls missions around the world, uh, despite coronavirus slowing that down and hindering that process. Uh, though they're not going to get into that. That's not one of the ten. <clears throat> uh, we would go around telling people about Moroni chapter 10 verse 4 and 5. Uh, which says, And when ye shall receive these things, referring to the Book of Mormon, I would exhort you that you would ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ, if these things are not true. And if ye shall ask with a sincere heart, with real intent, having faith in Christ, he will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, ye may know the truth of all things. And for some reason, despite my having caught on that this was science-based, because it uh, directly applies to Alma chapter 32, the majority of Mormons, if not all, understand this completely different. Uh, they take out manifest, uh, or change it to a spiritual manifestation instead, which is not a manifestation. Because manifestation refers to a physical manifestation, something you can see, uh, smell, uh, taste, uh, speak, hear, and touch. Uh, that's what gets manifested. Uh, but uh, uh, also by the power of is removed from the traditional interpretation of this as well. So that it's just the Holy Ghost revealing truth, as Mormons believe. They now have a witness. Uh, Alma chapter 32, starting in verse 28, uh, is the science of agriculture being used as an explanation for the doctrine of Mormonisms regarding faith and what you're supposed to do with faith, as James uh, which is also a scripture mastery of Mormonism, yet we've now uh, turned it into a verb rather than the noun of completion for works. So an artistic work, for example. Uh, an artist works on a work and completes the work. 
and so in 28 of Alma 32, now we will compare the word unto a seed. There's the agriculture comparison. Agriculture is a science-based uh, field. And, and so it's uh, informing Mormons and anybody who receives this that uh, faith is just the beginning step. That Moroni chapter 10, 4 and 5, talking about read, ponder, pray, is how to obtain the word from the Holy Ghost. But then you have to then plug it into this scientific equation or process in order to uh, obtain the fruit or manifestation of the word. And so when you get an idea, if you're an architect, you get ideas for an architectural design. It doesn't do any good if you don't put it on paper on blueprints. Uh, a construction worker can't follow blueprints, blueprints if there are no blueprints to follow. If uh, the architect says, hey, I've done it all in my mind, just do what I tell you. He needs blueprints. Even if the architect were to talk about it, say, oh, well, you need walls and you need a roof. He needs more than that. He needs measurements. Uh, he needs uh, uh, designs, all that stuff in order to do his job. And then, likewise, the construction worker takes the blueprints, which are now the word, which are the fruit of the architect. And thus you go down the line. And so the, the construction worker, if the blueprints are good, will produce a good house if he is obedient to the designs of the house. That is Mormon doctrine. Uh, and Mormons don't know it. Number nine. In the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, there's what's called prophet, seer, revelator, and translator. These are what's called priesthood keys of the Melchizedek priesthood. Uh, they are supposed to be all held with the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. But uh, you'll probably recognize that all 15 uh, leaders in the First Presidency and in the Quorum of the Twelve are called prophet, prophets, seers, and revelators. No translator. Uh, the, uh, the four uh, prophet, seer, revelator, and translator are science-based. As the doctrine is science-based, so are the priesthood keys science-based as well. So for prophet, uh, that is someone who utilizes scientific theories to make predictions. A seer is someone who has uh, arche uh, archaeology uh, experience, uh, uh, philosophy, uh, hard-based psychological science, not the pseudoscience that we have today of psychology, uh, and uh, Seer is compact. He's able to do lots of different science-based stuff. A revelator is an astronomer. He's able to reveal the signs in the heavens. And translator, well, that's already a science-based linguistic field. Uh, but for the Mormon church, it's primarily for ancient languages. And uh, Mormons uh, are not explained each of these as uh, the leaders of the church only talk about uh, the 
keys of the kingdom. And the keys of the kingdom uh, are not, uh, there's more to that. Uh, Joseph Smith uh, gave the missionary quorum of the twelve, it was a different organization under Joseph Smith, he gave them the keys of the kingdom to preach the gospel and to set up churches around the world. That's a lot different than the keys of the kingdom for administration purposes. But that is what the current leadership inform us, is that uh, the priesthood keys are the keys of the kingdom, and that's for leadership. Uh, but Mormons are misinformed as to the origins of the priesthood keys. So as you may have guessed from number nine, only Joseph Smith was a prophet, seer, revelator, and translator. No one else was all four of those titles. In uh, Doctrine and Covenants, section 107, or, well, it's in 107.92, uh, talking about the president of the office of the high priesthood, but in section 124, uh, verse 125, I give unto you my servant Joseph to be a presiding elder over my church, over all my church, to be a translator, a revelator, a seer, and prophet. Hiram Smith, uh, in this passage, Verse 88, well, not 88, what are you saying 88 for? 94, talking to uh, Hiram, which back in verse 91, uh, that my servant Hiram, the brother of Joseph Smith, the older brother, may take the office of priesthood and patriarch, which was appointed unto him by his father. So. Joseph Smith Sr. had died now, and it was being passed on to Hiram. And in verse 94, and from this time forth, I appoint unto him, Hiram, that he may be a prophet and a seer and a revelator unto my church, as well as my servant Joseph Smith. Notice translator is missing. Hiram is patriarch, Joseph is translator. The two of them together are prophets, seers, and revelators. No one else. Uh, Brigham Young, as the president of the Missionary Quorum of Twelve, only had the priesthood keys of uh, uh, the kingdom to preach the gospel. Uh, 127, I give unto you, my servant Brigham Young, to be a president over the Twelve Traveling Council. Uh, that's a big difference from the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. It's the Missionary Twelve. Which Twelve hold the keys to open up the authority of my kingdom upon the four quarters of the earth, and after that to send my word to every creature. Missionaries, preaching the gospel, setting up uh, uh, churches. 
That's all it is. It's not administrative. Uh, and then 131 is where the administrative version of it is. And they made sure to put it lowercase. And again I say unto you, I give unto you a high council for the cornerstone of Zion. That is the administrative council of 12. And so things are a lot different now. But only uh, Joseph Smith and Hiram were prophets, seers, and revelators. Joseph had translation. Hiram had patriarch. Uh, and so after Joseph Smith died, that's number seven. In section 107, uh, verse 22, and I remind the viewer, Joseph Smith was already in the position of the first presidency. And so with this in mind, Joseph Smith is establishing the method for choosing his succession. Now, he previously talks about how there are to be three presidents or presiding officers in each of the priesthood quorums, uh, in all of the priesthood quorums, in each of the two priesthoods, the lesser and the low, uh, higher priesthood, Melchizedek and Aaronic priesthoods. And, and here uh, is the method for selection of the presiding high priests, the first presidency. Of the Melchizedek priesthood, three presiding high priests chosen by the body. This has never been done in my lifetime. This has never been done at all. When Joseph Smith died, Brigham Young and Sidney Rigdon and uh, Lucy Mack Smith uh, got up and spoke at a conference and then after the conference everybody went their own way. There was no vote of the Melchizedek Priesthood to select who the replacements in each of the positions of the First Presidency are to be. We don't even do this in any of the other quorums. It's just not done. For the Aaronic Priesthood, the bishop selects who is to be uh, the group or the, yeah, the quorum leader. And uh, sometimes you'll have a bishop who will consult with the, the deacon's quorum advisor. Uh, they'll have a, an, an adult advisor over each of the quorums. Uh, but uh, it, it's not done by vote of the members of the quorum. And uh, right here, it says there's supposed to be a vote. Mormons know about the myth of Adam on Diamond, a great priesthood meeting where keys are given to Jesus Christ, as well as to Adam who gives it to Jesus Christ. Uh, that is misinterpreted as well. Uh, like I said, there's many things I could add to this list, but in this case, I'll reveal this much, that uh, Joseph Smith was talking about uh, succession in the church. Uh, that it's not giving priesthood keys, it's having a vote for the new successor. And so Adam on Diamond had the church had legitimate succession uh, would therefore uh, for the millennium have a vote uh, for the the millennial uh, first presidency. Notice it's first presidency they choose the counselors in the first presidency as well uh, by vote. 
and uh, and so yeah, when Brigham Young and Sidney Rigdon and others, because I'm not talking about that in here, I had to check first to make sure I'm not uh, overlapping things. Uh, that uh, uh, Brigham Young decided to reorganize the whole administration, and that's when Prophet Seer Revelator, no translator, was given to himself and to his counselors and to his Quorum of the Twelve, the combination of the High Council and his Ministering Twelve, the Missionary Twelve. And so the sustaining vote that is held in conferences in the Mormon Church, uh, that's uh, not supposed to be a vote. It's merged as uh, many of us are going, I'm not voting. Why am I calling it a vote when it's not a vote? Well, it's because the second half uh, is once they are voted upon, appointed, and ordained to the office, then they're presented uh, to the church uh, to be upheld by the confidence, faith, and prayer of the church. So that's what's supposed to be done in conference, is that they just announce, hey, the Melchizedek priesthood held a vote, and the following have been appointed and ordained to the first presidency of the church. So it's different than Catholics, and it's different than what we're currently doing in the church, as it's the president of the Quorum of the Twelve who becomes the president of the church, which we were not made aware of, because I was informed and confirmed by an LDS church historian, who shall remain nameless for her safety and her job, as I revealed too much revealing her sex, that uh, anybody can be chosen as the president of the church, not supposed to be the president of the Quorum of the Twelve. Nonetheless, that's what it is, and since the, the incorporation that the church made in 1923, that is the way it is to be done. Mormons are no longer a part of selecting uh, the church leadership. So Melchizedek priesthood holders were banned in 1923 in their incorporation document and uh, filed in the, in the uh, state of Utah. As I see from the time, uh, this is going to be part one. So this will be the last uh, of part one, which is halfway through. Uh, it was Joseph Smith who uh, came up with the Word of Wisdom, section 89 in the Doctrine and Covenants, right? Not 79? 89, right? Word of Wisdom. And this is where uh, people believe that Mormons aren't allowed to have Mountain Dew or Coke or Pepsi, um, but uh, they can take uh, psychotropic drugs for depression <laughs> instead. Um, yeah, it's the where uh, uh, let's see, inasmuch that man drink as any man drinketh wine or strong drink among you. Behold, it is not good, neither meat in the sight of your father. Uh, so, yeah, and again, tobacco is not for the body, neither for the belly, and is not good for man, but is an herb, herb, for bruises and sick cattle to be used with judgment and skill. And again, hot drinks are not for the body or belly. And then there's... Uh, a recommended dietary plan, and some Mormons take it to the extreme, thinking that we're supposed to be uh, uh, veg uh, vegetarians or vegan, even to the ultimate extreme, and uh, that's not the case either, because uh, Joseph Smith did talk about having a little meat. Give me my burger. 
Uh, although with this coronavirus, they're talking about doing alternative meats. We had that in grade school, the soybean. Oh. Oh. Those are bad for men. They're good for women and estrogen, bad for men and testosterone. <laughs> they don't tell us that, do they? But uh, anyway, uh, and so uh, Brigham Young uh, is the one responsible for turning it into a commandment. At least that's what we're told. However, it's uh, in fact that Brigham Young brought over uh, barley hops and uh, tobacco uh, seed and had uh, created a brewery in here in Salt Lake Valley and a tobacco fields uh, for smoking uh, not for not necessarily just for bruises and sick cattle uh, but uh, for smoking and uh, along with that he also uh, had a uh, brothels and this should be a separate thing but it's important to understand in the context of the word of wisdom because at the brothels you had your uh, bars uh, uh, saloon I guess is what it was called and so the the men would go into the saloon buy beer uh, smoke chew tobacco uh, and uh, help themselves to a woman all paid of course because that's what a brothel is <coughs> paying for sex paying for beer paying for tobacco or for smoke and uh, 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 Mormons I didn't know this Mormons don't know this it's rumored now Regent Street was where Brigham Young had his brothel that he frequent, frequented often uh, despite uh, having more, multiple wives um, but uh, uh, after he made it an official in 1852 uh, this is when after which he then began the construction of the brothels I think the first one was 1857 that was at the uh, point of the mountain uh, and uh, Orrin Porter Rockwell was the owner of that brothel and of course you have a madam who's in charge of the women so that the men don't have to deal with them uh, they just deal with the finances uh, so if you don't quite understand why Brigham Young would have brothels when he had polygamy do the math if you have a fairly even amount of men to women and you decide we're going to start polygamy how many wives will it take before there are no women for the rest of the men exactly uh, Brigham Young had upwards of I don't know 20s 30s 40s 50s I don't know uh, I guess I can Google search it uh, how many wives did Brigham Young have how many wives did Brigham Young have? Uh, 55 wives. Yeah, you'd think that would be enough, but uh, if he, I'm not going to get into it. But uh, Brigham Young had a lot, Heber C. Kimball had a lot, his 12 had a lot. Uh, those he bribed, such as my third great grandfather, John Solomon Fulmer, gave him one. After he made it official, John Solomon Fulmer had got another one. Uh, his main wife had died by then. Uh, and, uh, and so, yeah, he was only able to get one, and he was bribed into a financial position in the church. And he only got one extra wife and then picked up one when his first wife died and uh, 
that's, that's how it works. There are slim pickings for those who are not in leadership. So what do you do for the men who don't have a wife to have sex with? And yes, it's sex. If we were taught proper sex ed, both sexes would understand a man's sexual processes as well as men understanding women's sexual processes so that we wouldn't have these fights back and forth over not understanding each other. Nonetheless, um, back then, you built brothels to handle men's needs. And uh, that's why he had to build brothels. It's because he started polygamy. And to have polygamy in, and thus have brothels, you needed to supply them with beer, tobacco, uh, and smokes. Uh, I guess they put them in pipes back then, but uh, I, I'm not sure when the first rolled up paper smoke uh, began. Uh, not into that stuff. Because born and raised Mormon, uh, I remember being a little kid. I still remember this. This is probably my earliest memory in my life. Uh, my mom was taking me out for a walk. I was holding her hand. And then I see a cigarette butt on the ground. I leaned down to try to pick it up with my right hand and my mom saw what I was doing and immediately pulled me back away from it and said, no, don't touch that, that's bad. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it never been an issue for me. I never desired to smoke, uh, even though I uh, had friends in high school who were the smokers. Uh, so I probably got a lot of secondhand smoke, and being in Southern California, I got the pollution smoke from the the um, exhaust of the vehicles. Uh, and something caused me to have my esophagus problem. It's not uh, uh, the breathing problem. Um, I can't think of the name of it. It's not that where you have to have a uh, breathing thing. Uh, it's uh, related to allergies that swells up the esophagus and uh, causes phlegm uh, buildup, preventing me from breathing. Can't think of a word. Okay, so this is it for the first section. Uh, so I have five to one left to go. Uh, it's noon, I need to eat.